All right, so recently I went from Deckard Dream Borrower to Deckard's Dream Owner, and I have a problem. You see, this is my current rack situation. It's this, I don't want to get the brand name wrong, on stage. I think it might be on stage. Oh, it's Quick Lock. Ha ha! On stage, saved by the branding. Quick Lock. This thing. I got it from a good friend, but it's gotta go. It's missing a caster, it wobbles like crazy, and this is also where I set my laptop up on the top. So, super sketchy. If I put a Deckard Stream up here, this whole thing's gonna go down, so I need to find a better rack. All right, on my way to go pick up this rack I found on um, Craigslist. Guy wanted 100, talked him down to 80. I got about 20 minutes to get there before he leaves and then I'll have to pick it up tomorrow. Hopefully I can make it there right now. So yeah, let's go grab this thing. I think I'm getting close. Give me some directions. How big this thing is. Oh, please fit. Please fit. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Please fit. Please fit. Yes. So I got this massive 40 rack space, whatever you want to call it, thing in the car. Barely. I got a Honda Fit. Um, Benefits, as the name states. All right, let's head home and put this thing together. Man down. Okay, I need to figure out which of these is the most important and put that near the top. Luckily for me, this is uh, the new rack I just got is at a full slant and then there's just some basic utility stuff at the bottom, like a flat section. It's basically the opposite of this, now that I think about it. I thought this would be cool because I was gonna be sitting down, but then I kind of turned my studio into a stand-up studio, so it didn't work out that good. Um, another thing I overlooked is I put my audio interface down at the bottom when I should have probably put it up at the top. So it'll most likely be these three rack spaces here, then the Deckards, and then everything else to follow. And I'll probably put power at the bottom, not at the top, like a loser. So wish me luck. This is gonna be not fun, but worth it, I hope. Man, the things I do for a Deckards. I seriously can't believe I just did this. This is, uh, remember that video I did? This one? Uh, yeah, completely down the drain. Um, uh, how do I wanna do this? Yeah, see, this caster parts, this is why I need to do one of these. Oh God. Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. Yeah, I think I got it. Slowly, baby, slowly. Oh, yeah, I am pulling everything. Duh, idiot. I have all my synths going into my patch bay, so I basically just ripped out everything. Honestly, at the end of the day, I'm just gonna have to unplug everything and redo it over there. I can't, like, move stuff over as a pair, so whatever. All right, MIDI, duh, my life's work, gone. Okay, that is all. That is all, folks. I got so many, like, TS and TRS cables here. They're all mixed up. I gotta get my life together. Okay, all that is done. Time for the dismemberment. You know, I'm kind of glad I'm doing this. I was worried it was gonna suck and be a pain, which it is, don't get me wrong, but... I'm just glad that it's kind of a clean start. Everything here, this is needed because I used to move 
apartments and houses regularly and it was nice to be able to take apart your studio and redo it and that's kind of I guess the idea here because of that you get to figure out your workflow you may have thought something was going to work before but you figured out something that works much better now as opposed to when you were first doing this and you're just an amateur so now being able to kind of figure things out know what you want and know how you want it you can just do it from scratch so yes this sucks but it's still kind of awesome man i don't even use this orbit anymore but maybe i will now that i got a nicer rack and i can have stuff a little neater powered up and whatnot it's a good sand just kind of whatever it has like a knob and a left right and an enter button it's pretty limited when it comes to trying to edit sounds on it but it's a good sound source all right one of my favorite things octopri mark II dynamic this is basically an extra eight inputs for my audio interface each input has a dynamic compressor on it which is cool um, it's really good for drum machines run a lot of my drum machines and all my NPCs through this thing. Kind of helps bring it in the mix a little bit. Honestly, I didn't know about this until I worked at Focusrite, which I still do now, but I love this thing, no matter what. Whether I work there or not, this thing's badass. There's one thing you should invest in. It's a good patch bay. It's what I have not done, and this thing gives me issues. It's also probably not uh, assisted by all the mixture of TS and TRS cables, but I got this thing. Look how rusty that is. I got this thing for like 20 bucks, so whatever. Cool, done. This now needs to go into the trash. I mean, recycling. Recycle kids, we only got one planet. Oh, this thing's light. It's getting a little tight in here. The main dilemma I have with doing rack stuff requires some math right because i have 40 spaces um, my decker's dream is three i need to figure this stuff out before i put it in here you can't really do this on the go i mean you can but it's a pain in the ass when you got to switch stuff up and then on top of that trying to figure out what you want where in the mix of things is the hard part because like i said i want my audio kind of near the top so i can crank it if i need to but i also wanted my power down low Hopefully my power cables are long enough, that would suck if not. But then my patch bay also needs to be near my audio interface, which is up here, which is gonna create a mess in the back. So I need to kind of like think about this beforehand. DD's three. Actually, I think Deckard's Dream is four. Oh man, see this is, I gotta go check. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I was wrong. The Deckard's Dream is four. M1 is two. And then is everything else one? Nope, JB1082. TX81, one, one, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then seven, one U item. So um, what, I'm what I'm counting is basically, if I look at this patch bay, this is one U, one unit. Um, when you put it in a rack, that's what it's gonna take up. One unit of space. Some stuff that's a little bigger can take up two units of space, and some stuff that's really big can take up four, five, six. But yeah, the biggest thing I got is the Deckards now, which is four, so not too bad. I guess I can use this to count. So, one, two, three, 16, 70. Holy shit. I think this is gonna fill the face of it perfectly. Holy shit. Awesome. This is gonna be badass. Now, all right. All right, getting juiced up, dropping things. Let's do this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This, these screws are the wrong size. I got these, which are the standard um, for the quick lock thing, but not the standard for this. Cool. Well, there goes all my excitement uh yeah i did just call about the rack screws actually so i was incorrect actually we do have regular rack screws as well it's like a 24 pack for 670. 
Okay, cool. You wouldn't happen to know okay. the, the size on them, would you? Awesome. And what time are you guys okay. close today? Uh, 9 p.m. Awesome. I'll see you guys soon. Sure. All right, peace. Perfect Circuit Audio, saving the day. They even called me back. They said no, and now they said yes. Shop small, support the homies. Let's do this. Only buy rack screws, only buy rack screws, only buy rack screws. Man, this store is dangerous, especially being so close. That looks smaller, right? It's definitely smaller. Like, like way smaller. Yeah. Oh, like Yeah. Is it a 1460? Cool. All right. It went a lot smoother than planned. Let's go finish this before the sun goes down. Yes. I think this is it. Yeah, this is the size. Woo! Now where were we? Starting with power. And awesome. I'm gonna try and use washers. You don't have to, but it kind of helps reduce some of the rack rash. Again, I like to start from the bottom up just because it'll allow me to then set things a little softer on each unit. Some people may advise against that. Please advise away whether I would listen or not is another story. Oh, what am I doing? I have a drill. Cool. Man, technology. The future is now. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this. It's kind of a piece of trash. Um, it has some funny sounds on it though. And I think a reason they kind of stopped selling this, this is kind of a rumor. Not sure if it's true or not, someone out there may have some more um, insight on this, but a lot of the samples and loops that are in here sound exactly like songs that are out. So I think they may have gotten into some sort of a lawsuit or I could just be talking out my ass. Man, I really like the rest. This is gonna be a tough one. We'll do, we'll do the TX. Check out this dope stuff. What? Cheat sheet built into the synth because nobody can program these things. Man, this is looking cool. Oh man, this is gonna be a pain to wire up. What you know about that? Got my brass sounds on deck. I knew that was gonna happen. Cool. And this one for sure going to use washers. Oh, dope that looks. Hell yeah. I love that the newest thing I have in this whole rack is a clone of something that was probably made before any of this stuff in the rack. Does that make sense? Cool. Damn, my math skills have paid off. It was always my favorite subject. Not too shabby. Okay, it's not too bad movement wise. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. I honestly do feel like I'm about to break one of these casters though. So, we have inter- Ow! Rock or something sharp here. Oh, that is a snug fit. All right, so I'm going out of the eight inputs here. And all I'm doing is going straight into the patch bay. And the reason I'm starting here is because these are the eight additional mic pre's. So these are gonna be one through eight and this is gonna be nine through 16. Oh, man, how do I wanna do this? I guess I'll go from here. Does this fit here? I don't think so, let's see. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, all right. Uh, that works, but then I just realized I did something stupid. So um, because it's the uh, Claret 8 Pre, it has one and two inputs, one and two on the front of the unit, and then three through eight on the back. So technically me going three into one is kind of messing things up. You know what, for the sake of keeping things as easy as I can later down the road, I'm gonna just skip one and two for now. I guess I could relabel it, but whatever. All right, so I have um, all the inputs going into here, into the bottom of the patch bay, easy peasy. 
they work in stereo pairs. Whatever gets plugged into the top of the patch bay just gets normal down. So by default, what I'm gonna want to do is my main setup, like a synthesizer, if I always want it to be on three and four, I'm gonna patch it into the back of here. For example, taking this yellow cable, let's say this yellow cable went to a synth somewhere, up here onto, uh, I don't know, synth A. Synth A, by default, is now going into here and then getting normaled or passed down below it onto the purple cable. But where patch bays become handy is that on the front of the unit, it looks just like this, and I can take a random synth and patch it into these, breaking the normalization and in return, allowing me to plug directly into this without having to unplug this. So that's where patch bays become super duper handy. And if you don't have one, you may look into getting some, it'll save you some headache of having to unplug and replug everything. There's a lot to be said about patch bays and the type of patch bays, and I am not your guy for that information. I just buy the cheapest ones possible because it works. As far as outputs go, uh, I have eight outputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So eight here, plus another eight here, 16. Then that's not including the, the main left and right output. I don't do too much of this. Um, if this will fit, three, four. If this fits, I usually end up doing um, just about four outputs. So again, by default, I can have these going out to the inputs of my MPC or my OctaTrack or something. Or if I wanted to sample something else like a pocket operator, on the front side, I can just plug directly into this bottom jack, but on the front of it and record directly into the pocket operator without having to unplug the MPC. Okay, so now to plug in some synthesizer stuff. I'm going audio out of the Deckard's Dream with the TS cable because it's mono unless you buy the expander. Kind of shitty, whatever. And I'll go into eight. Why? I don't know. No, what am I doing to myself? I'll go into three, cool. Just realized while reframing this shot, I have an Alesis 3630 way under here. And with that, I'm gonna utilize just not even going into the patch bay for this because I have so many outputs. I'm just gonna say scrap it um, and just go directly out of seven, eight, go into the input A, and it's dark in here, and input B. So channel A, channel B, I'm running out of inputs. This is gonna suck, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a lot of stuff I still need to plug in. Power-wise, this is one thing I kind of retained from music school is that you want to kind of keep it separate from audio. Eh, never really had an issue, but it's nice to keep things tight. Oh, I still need to power all this stuff. Here's a downside of a Deckard stream if you're trying to find a reason to not buy one. No power supply. First, I just found this out right now by opening it. It doesn't come with this, but on top of that, only has this really short cable and no um, like slack holder. I don't know what the hell the thing is called. So you plug this in, it's just kind of dangling which is a little sketchy. Alesis needs power. Oh, come on, dude. You're gonna give me a brick? A wall wart? I'm trying to rack stuff up, man. Okay, uh, power is done. Cool. Audio, check. Power, check. MIDI, nope. So this is gonna be the start of the chain. Uh, again, if you haven't seen, uh, I think it's that video. Um, I talk about this whole MIDI thing and it's it's exhausting. It's really exhausting. I'm just gonna go from top to bottom, straight down, chain these bad boys up, it should be good. And in, and that should be the end of the chain on this. It's a long chain, a little scared about it. Anyway, that's the Tower of Power. Let's plug this bad boy in, see if we can get it to work, huh? Let's try to not break anything. Wow, this actually fits. It's about to clear the top too. I didn't even think about this clearance and I actually perfectly just made it. 
So main big goal about this is I want to put the laptop up here. I can just hit record or whatever. I got push on that set if I need to hit record there. And I can do everything. Wow, this is sick. This is cool. This will be perfect. This has got to go. Not cool. Not perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, flip power on. 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 This is sick. This is super dope. Okay, cool. Look at me, mama. I'm resourceful. Found a piece of wood. There we go. Now I can slide this over even more and risk my laptop just falling and shattering in half. Then out of the way. Let's do this again. Just gonna delete everything, start from scratch for the most part. And I'm just gonna test that things work for right now. So audio, arm it. Cool, cool, volume. Man, I am so scared right now. Oh my God. That is, that was really scary. Here's a way you can learn from my mistake. Remember my patch base setup and I decided to put the Deckards on three and ignore four and just go stereo, stereo, stereo from there? No, what am I doing to myself? I'll go into three, cool. That was a really bad idea because three, four is a stereo pair. Five, six is a stereo pair. Seven, eight is a stereo pair. I can't change that. And what this means is three with the left side of the M1 is a stereo pair. So it's like, this is kind of a weird stereo pair. So I'm gonna have to go in the back and change that. But for now, I'm just gonna test it monophonically. So four should technically be the M1. Cool. Yep, as you'd expect. Dope. Boom, 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 boom. boom. house track, let's do this. All right. The Yamaha TX802. This is the one I don't know how to change the MIDI channel on. It's been the hardest thing for me. Did that do it? Oh, right. There's no volume on this, on the TX802. Whoo, that is hot. Turning this all the way down. Cool. The Tower of Power is complete. Minus that stupid thing I did on the inputs and outputs thing. Um, I'm going to switch that tonight. Got everything going. That should be it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it took way too long to make it. It's super late at night right now. And I'm ready for bed and maybe some lasagna. So until next week, you know the drill. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Actually, hold on. If you have any questions about what went on here, or if this inspired any other ideas of what you want to see, let me know in the comments below. And now you know the drill, and that's to share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.